Hi, I'm Susie Dingle, writer, garden coach, and landscape designer. And I'd like to introduce you, if you haven't met already, a Rosa Ragosa. Probably you have, but maybe you didn't know about this particular one. This is in the pavement series. That's not like the pavement on the sidewalk. And I believe it was a German bread rose. The Rosa Ragosa is an essential plant in my cottage core garden. I've had this one on this slope for about at least 10 years, probably 11 years now. And I'm very happy with it. First off, it has secured the slope, which is amazing. So from a, a functional perspective, Rosa Rugosas can really hold the soil in. They also functionally can create a barrier. So they're thorny and it can keep things from getting in or sometimes even going out. The foliage is a lovely color, especially when it flushes out this gorgeous apple green color. And then the aging leaves are a lovely dark green, but not so dark that they look dull. They always look healthy. And when they bloom, by the way, and then they fall off, they never look bad. They never look mushy or brown or anything like that. They just fall off. And I, I try and get out there and collect them for uh, my potpourri and just putting them in a bowl to dry because they are so, so fragrant. It, they will smell like roses for, I've even had them last up to a year smelling like a rose. And what they leave behind is a rose hip. So that's the seed part on it, and I, I don't think I have any formed on this right now. But that seed is good for some, certain kinds of birds will eat it, and uh, it's also possible to make tea out of it, and some people do that for the high amount of vitamin C in it. Here are some hips starting to form, and at this stage, this early on, it's early June, I will cut off these heads once say like this one this stem has bloomed out there's no more roses coming on it to bloom so I will cut this back and then a new flush of roses will come but after that I will let the whole bush go to rose hips this particular rose Rosa Rugosas are very forgiving as far as how you handle them I can cut this all the way to the ground and I've done that a few times before in order to flush new growth and new stems and also to control the height of it. it this particular one doesn't get this tall, very tall at all. Maybe I'm going to say five feet max, but there are some that get much taller. So that's one way to control a Rosa Ragosa. Now what do they need? Well, not much. Uh, you could put fertilizer on them, rose poop. Go ahead and do that. They would love it. That would be great. They need some moisture, but they can tolerate dryness and live through that. The, a particular Rosa Ragosa can anyway. Now where I have this planted is on a slope. So the water does drain from the top and down and passes by the roots. That's actually preferred for most plants, moist well drained. We all read that on the tag, right? But uh, the rose, this rose doesn't have to have it. It can handle a little bit of swampiness as long as it drains through and doesn't have standing water in it. That's not the best thing, but it may not even die in that. So wide swings from very dry to pretty wet. I'd say that's a, that's a winner in the landscape. Also can handle extremely cold temperatures which is wonderful, and heat. This rose is definitely a survivor, and that's why we see it so often in old farmhouses or on the boundaries of property. Another way I use this rose is to create a diversion for deer. 
if you plant this on the boundaries of your property, the deer will love it. They love roses. And if you plant enough of it on the boundaries, they usually, that will satisfy them. And most of the time, it will keep them from entering into your garden further. Not promising anything, but I have used that trick before and it has worked. Wait a minute, maybe it was the dog on the property. All kidding aside, if you have deer, you might want to consider planting a plethora of flowers all on the outside edge that they just really love. So it would be violets and roses particularly. And those things spread really well and can handle the nibbling from the deer. They are very disease resistant and pest resistant. Rosa rugosa is generally a pretty trouble-free rose, but it can sometimes get sucking insects like aphids or thripes, and neither is good to have on the rose. So what I will do is generally, if it's a small infestation, I just let nature take its course and beneficial insects come. But if I say want to harvest this uh, but these buds right here are the flowers in just a little while, you know, when they open. I'll just take the flowers and rinse them off in a bowl of water. This is, you have to do this when they're in bud phase. This doesn't really work very well when they're in full flower. But I can usually reduce the population enough to help win the battle and also hopefully harvest some bug-free roses. Much better. I could also spray off these roses, although I find that this method is much more effective. Oh, hey, okay, fabulous. One moment. Just inches away from where I was cleaning off the rose buds, selectively cleaning them off from the harmful insects, I noticed this little red dot. I think it may be a ladybug. I'll take a closer look. And if it is, that's the kind of predator that I expect to see. Yes, indeed, we have a ladybug within just six inches from where I was cleaning off the buds from the aphids. So that's why I like to be very selective and not just spray down the plants or use some kind of uh, powerful insecticide because these little gems are so good at keeping the aphid population in control. The trick is to give them enough food to eat for their prey over enough years that the predators, the ladybugs, actually get a chance to increase their own population. That's why I don't do much of any controls early on. Over a period of say five years, I generally find that the garden comes into some kind of homeostasis and the uh, ins uh, harmful insects are usually in pretty good control by the beneficial insects. I hope you enjoyed learning about the Rosa Ragosa, this particular pavement series. Until next time.